Mr. Draghi, um, you've explained uh, quite convincingly, I think, the necessity of your QE program uh, to uh, maintain the euro currency if with such unnatural countries forming together a, a single currency, uh, one, one needs to take uh, remarkable measures. And uh, of course, this has come at, uh, at great cost for the Netherlands, our pension savings, our, uh, our businesses, our savings in general, our economic growth. Uh, and this is why in the Netherlands now we have an increasing uh, number of people doubting whether we should continue staying in the euro zone. And this is um, what brings me to my question. You've said in January um, that any country leaving the eurozone must settle the bill first uh, regarding Italy's uh, you know, possibilities of leaving the eurozone. As we in the Netherlands now have a surplus in the Target 2 system of uh, around 100 billion euro, does this, by your own words, mean that if the Netherlands decides to leave the eurozone, which is one of the key points of my party's program, uh, we would get back 100 million euro from the southern countries in the eurozone, according to your views? Mr. Draghi. Thank you. Let me, uh, let me respond to you as I have responded to similar questions in the European Parliament. Uh, the euro is irrevocable, and this is the treaty. I will not speculate on uh, hypotheses that have no ground in the present treaty. Second, the euro has been a success for the eurozone and for especially for countries like the Netherlands. As I mentioned before, you had uh, an economic situation thanks, I should say, first and foremost to your strength, to the way you, to the, to the quality of your laws, to the fact that your business environment is growth friendly, to your own merits, but also to the support of our monetary policy, you had an economic situation which was rarely so good. But also there is a deeper reason, and there is a deeper reason why the euro has benefited all countries, but especially countries that are strong, export-oriented, with high productivity, and a business-favorable legal environment. The euro has protected the single market. Most of you are too young to remember the 80s and the early 90s, when we had periodic devaluations of all countries and there was a strong instability there. Neither price stability was there, nor the better countries which were stronger could actually see their merit rewarded because there were continuing devaluations robbing them from their, from their merit. Now, the single market was a major achievement towards our integration, but it was also an achievement that has increased our prosperity, our collective prosperity. And the single market cannot be protected other than with one currency, with irrevocably fixed exchange rates. And that's why the euro came into consideration in the early 90s and was finally found its place in the Maastricht Treaty. So I think we, if we remember the experience of those years, we should have no doubts about the euro being a success. And, um, and also legally, I made the point before. Thank you. Well, clearly, we, we can disagree about the merits of the euro uh, currency, and uh, my view is that in non-euro countries, the uh, economic situation is significantly better. But um, just one point. You said you didn't want to speculate about the possibility of the eurozone falling apart, but isn't that precisely what you did in January when you were saying, if Italy leaves, it will have to settle the bill? You were actually speculating about the breaking apart of the eurozone, and wouldn't it be intellectually fair to have the same uh, principles if the Netherlands decides to leave. I, um, in the European Parliament, I was asked the same question about that. I said one can have technical answers of all kinds, but the point is the euro is irrevocable, and I'm not going to speculate on hypotheses that have no ground whatsoever. We'll see about that then. We'll see about that, for sure.